ME204 Kinematic Equations Acceleration, Velocity, and Position Relationships Continued In our last discussion, we talked about instantaneous velocity being the first-time derivative of the position function, and that the acceleration was the first-time derivative of the velocity function, or the second-time derivative of the position function. For constant acceleration, we determined that our final velocity is equal to the constant acceleration times the time plus the initial velocity, and that our final position is equal to one-half the constant acceleration times the time squared plus the initial velocity times the time plus our initial position. Let's look at another situation. What if we rearrange some of these relationships using algebra? Well, we have a dt that's in common with our acceleration and our velocity equations. So if we solve for dt, for the acceleration, we get dt is equal to dv over a. And for our velocity equation, dt is equal to ds over v. Setting these things equal to each other, we get that dv over a is equal to ds over v. Then, collecting like terms where possible, we can determine that the acceleration times ds is equal to the velocity dv. This is another very important equation that we use in dynamics frequently. Notice that in this particular equation, time is eliminated from it, so we don't have to worry about how long it takes for something to happen. We only need to worry about what the position is, the acceleration, and the velocity. Again, let's look at constant acceleration. Remembering that ADS equals VDV, if we integrate that function, assuming that our acceleration is constant, we would get the acceleration times our final position minus our initial position is equal to one-half times our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared. Rearranging this equation gives us that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the constant acceleration times our final position minus our initial position. So, in summary, when we have constant acceleration, we have three equations that we can use to simplify the problem. First, our final velocity is equal to our constant acceleration times the time plus our initial velocity. Our final position is equal to one-half times the constant acceleration times the time squared plus our initial velocity times the time plus our initial position. And finally, our final velocity squared is equal to our initial velocity squared plus two times our constant acceleration times our final position minus our initial position. Here's another example. Let's say that a particle is moving along a straight line and its acceleration is represented as a is equal to 4s squared meters per second squared. If the particle has an initial velocity of negative 100 meters per second and starts at a position of 10 meters, we want to write an equation to find the velocity at any position. First of all, we need to ask ourselves, is this a constant acceleration problem? Our acceleration is dependent on what the position of the object is. So, no, this is not a constant acceleration problem. Can I simply integrate a equals 4s squared like this? No, this is not valid because our acceleration in this case is not a function of time. Therefore, we can't just integrate the problem to find out what our velocity is. Remember that our acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity with respect to time. And if we solve for our velocity, dv is equal to a dt. Notice that there's no position anywhere in this equation. So I can't just integrate this and assume that I'm going to get the correct answer. This is only valid if our acceleration is a function of time. So what can we do? Well, let's look at using ADS equals VDV. In this case, we plug in our equation for A, which is 4S squared, then integrating both sides, knowing that our limits of integration for position start at 10 and go to our final position, and our limits of integration for velocity starts at minus 100 and goes to our final velocity. Solving this, we get 4 thirds S cubed evaluated from 10 to final position is equal to 1 half the velocity squared evaluated from minus 100 to the final velocity. Simplifying, ultimately we find that the velocity is equal to plus or minus 
the square root of 2.67s cubed plus 7,333.3. But this gives us two answers, a positive and a negative. Well, we know that this one has to be negative in order for us to get that the velocity is equal to minus 100 at a position of 10. Our next topic is erratic rectilinear particle motion, graphical methods.